bag on the top? This here's a stylophone. It's a uh, consumer product little pocket synth thing. You've got the original stuff you're supposed to play, which is the stylus and the keys, which are discrete intervals, you know, it's like one. So this is conductive EEG pipes, so that uh, I'll have better electrical contact uh, between the front and the back, which is how you uh, play it. So there's aluminum tape on the back. Uh, yeah, some people call this the slime guitar. It's technically the style guitar, but it's really kind of slimy. Probably the slimiest instrument that you'll ever play. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I started a series of experiments where I tried to introduce some sort of more playful interaction into both the making of the instrument and then the relationship between me and the performers. And things like this. Um, but they all have very different, very different sounds. The classic way you hold a father is like leaving some space underneath, like the, the way I'm mean, constructed where it has Do all things like this. Uh, really shred. Do notes based on key and scale. Uh, so zero is tonic, ADSR stuff. Piezo and a stick. Yeah, yeah. And it's a. Uh, so Brian showed me how to build a whisker phone. Um, so we have a, a piezo here, um, so it's a pressure sensor, and then there's a um, carbon fiber uh, filament, um, and essentially that translate the pressure changes from scraping along different surfaces into a signal, which you just send straight to an amp, which um, basically I think is going to um, make the process of creating samples for electroacoustic music a lot faster. So it's pretty simple. A wooden dowel with a little hole drilled into the end. And uh, it's kind of cut open, just a little notch, uh, kind of routed out the middle of each one where the cable goes through. And a tiny piezo transducer and like a carbon fiber filament that you buy at like model shops for like reinforcing model airplanes. What's the purpose of the carbon fiber? Um, it's just like the thing that you use to, to focus the you know the sound that you're gonna pick up really. Why not just use a piece of wire, a piece of stiff wire? Because it, it bounces back and stays, doesn't like lose its shape or anything. So normally I take uh, recordings of just general things like crumpling things together, hitting things, ambient things in the in my environment, and then modulate them. Hitting spoons together, uh, street noise, crunching leaves, things like that. Soup it up. So what I did was I added a few electronic components and rerouted the signal chain um, to integrate a, um, a DD3 delay pedal in with some, um, well, it's a 4093 Veneta chip. It features one of the biggest knife switches I could find um, to turn it on. So there's these uh, 
photo resistors to control the oscillator. Um, there's a contact microphone on the inside to pick up sounds like this. Um, there's a feedback system with another contact mic and a speaker. A CD player motor or a fan motor. So that's pretty much all it does. But it's built from a, a, a hex uh, inverter, a hex shift trigger. Uh, it's, it's an extremely simple circuit. It's a logic circuit that's used. Uh, it's, it's an old uh, type of chip that's used originally was built for uh, computer logic circuits. This guy back in the 70s named Stanley Lunetta discovered that uh, you can make super simple oscillators uh, with these little chips. It's very, yeah, you input a one and it outputs a zero, or you input a zero and it outputs a one. That one is coming around and charging up that capacitor. Eventually, as, when the capacitor charges up enough, then it looks like a one to the input, and so then you get a zero at the output. And so as a result, the zero output causes the capacitor to discharge, and eventually when the capacitor discharges enough, then it looks like a zero to the input, and then you get a one coming out the other side, <laughs> flipping back and forth like that as the capacitor charges and discharges um, hundreds or thousands of times per second. As we mount them inside these jars, and you build the project using uh, these breadboards. Uh, and, and so that means that later, when you get home, uh, you can uh, make use of the other oscillators on the circuit awesome. and, uh, and, and expand it or change it, experiment. A couple months ago, we actually brought the inventor of that synthesizer, Stanley Lunetta, over to Nicebridge. So sad I missed that. Yeah, he, he brought a bunch of his sound sculptures and, and demoed them, and he talked about the old days, having a... Well, he told this one story of having a beer with John Cage. <laughs> Major noise.